Hello and welcome to the first episode of the series What the heck is? In this series, we take complex topics in the cl- area of cloud, devops, software engineering, etc and break them down into plain and simple English for you. So here we go, let's get started. So today we'll talk about what the heck is platform engineering and we'll touch about these things. Obviously, what is it? What are the approaches to platform engineering? The three pillars? What typically areas are covered by a platform engineering team? Skills required? We'll talk about the money and then some references. So what is platform engineering? Let's talk about that. It's a specialized product team that creates and maintains the engineering platform. Now, what do I mean by engineering platform? We'll cover it as we go along. But this is the team that focuses on the platform. It does not focus on the software delivery or the releases or those kind of things, right? And I explain more of this as we go along. It supports the need of software developers by providing common reusable toolset and capabilities and interface to complex infrastructure. What does this mean in plain English? It means as a developer, I get access to certain tools so that I do not have to go to my cloud environment to create a machine, my CI system to create a build, uh, another deployment system to go and deploy that. All of that would come to me abstracted out and I would just get maybe a GUI where I have to click some buttons and that's it. It typically includes experts from various fields, obviously cloud, DevOps, SRE, infra, security, and very, very importantly, a product manager to run this whole circus. Now, I love this example from Gartner, which describes product engineering beautifully. And I've taken this picture and these green uh, blow ups, these are my understandings and my interpretation of this picture. And the way to read this picture is bottom up. So stay with me as I read this picture. So the first is infrastructure complexity. So in a large enterprise, you might have on-premise stuff, you might have cloud, you might have serverless, you might have multi-cloud. So that's infrastructure complexity. Infrastructure platform is your chef, your puppet, your Ansible, the base of immutable environments. That's what we mean by the infrastructure platform. That's what abstracts and lets you create your workloads on top of this infrastructure complexity. And then is the creation of immutable environment, which is application plus your configuration over this base machine. So think of it like at this infrastructure platform layer, you are creating a VM. At this layer, you are joining together those bunch of VMs, putting your application on top of that, using some tools, knowledge, platform, whatever. And then you have a developer portal on top of it. You can also put in quotas and approvals. For example, uh, what is the spend allocated for my team? How much infrastructure am I able to create per quarter, per year, things like that, and the appropriate approvals, right? And that abstracts and launches everything as a service, which is used by products and service teams. These are the development slash test teams building the product or the service and uses platform as a service provided by the platform engineering team. So you get the hierarchy now. So first is infrastructure layer, infrastructure platform, then the digital platform, which provides you the application plus the base layer on top of which the application team then comes in and starts building stuff. So that's a high level overview of the platform engineering. All right, now let's go to the next one. Now let's look at the approaches to platform engineering. The traditional approach to doing software development really, not just platform engineering. So let's look at that. So you have a team A, a team B, and a team C, each doing development activities on application one, application two, and application three. And once these apps are getting developed, then they deploy onto, let's say, an AWS or a GCP. 
and these deployments could have interdependencies meaning application one could be dependent on two and then the user getting access to this application that's the traditional way of doing software development now let's look at the platform engineering way where in each of these you introduce platforms so similarly you have team a team b and team c doing development now to do this development they use the devops tooling what does this mean things like your source control uh, your build system your uh, testing systems all sorts of testings let's say you use sonar cube for uh, sas then das testings all of those things would be part of this devops tooling and then the application 1 2 and 3 is created and then the deployment is also done using a platform now this platform could be an extension of the devops tooling wherein you're using let's say an azure pipeline to deploy or a jenkins to deploy or um, let's say a harness or an argo cd to deploy onto your cloud systems Plat this platform also means the kubernetes system onto which you're deploying or the legacy system onto which you're deploying using which the user accesses this application so what has changed from the previous picture is that you've introduced two platforms one for the devops tooling and the other for the creation of the application platform what's the advantage of this the advantage is that it frees up application devs time and effort from infra related activities so they don't they don't have to worry about hey i need to create a vm where do i log a ticket to vm how do i get in touch with the tech ops team or the infrastructure team all of that is abstracted from my platform layer and the platform decouples the application development process from the infrastructure activities i hope this makes sense to you okay now with this done let's now move on to the area of focus of product engineering teams now this is a survey done from uh, the state of product engineering in 2023 and they asked a bunch of teams where your current focus is and 66 percent of the team said their focus is on docker kubernetes a very close 60 percent said infrastructure as code things like terraform pelumi and then came the ci cd which is the argo cds the helms of the world and then a sharp decrease drop with database storage and networking because these are kind of the underlying things you gotta know this what's the perspective of telling you this it tells you if you want to get into platform engineering what are the areas to focus on you start with knowing your ci cd platforms your argo cd your harnesses your jenkins whatever your organization is using you have to know infrastructure as code and obviously you need to understand the whole containerization space with docker kubernetes or serverless wherever your organization is going so that kind of gives you a mental map of where platform engineering is going as well okay cool so that's the approach to platform engineering now let's talk about three pillars of platform engineering which is very simple which says number one treat platform as a product because for you as part of the platform engineering team you are not developing a utility which the developers will use you are using a product which the developers will use what does that mean that means that you're building an idp an internal development product not just troubleshooting environment issues and that's a big thing when i talk to a lot of teams wherein they think that their whole goal is to solve some environment issues but as a platform engineer your goal is to develop a product right and then the second tenet is to treat developers as users because your goal is to develop self-service platforms not set up the tool for developers so your goal is not to help a developer set up his or her kubernetes system that's not your goal your goal is to provide self-service where you can say guys log on to this portal click blah 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 and boom and your entire setup will be ready and then third very important improve developer experience by building internal developer platforms 
to reduce cognitive load, develop a toil, blah, blah, blah. You know this, right? Basically, if you do these two, the third will automatically happen. Now let's switch gears to talk about what are the typical areas covered by a platform engineering team. And you should be able to guess this by now because it's pretty obvious of what we are talking about. You know, everything from provisioning the environment typically starts with non-production, goes to production as well. Then to build, to build, to network, security, database deployments, then the application deployments, the release, observability, governance, and cost. So these are the typical areas covered by the product engineering team. Now, very important, what are the skills required to become a platform engineer? All right, so let's go at this one by one. Let me get it in focus first. So to start with learning the fundamentals of product management. Why? Because you're building a product an internal development platform. So you need to understand what is user research, what is product roadmap, what is MVP, what's user adoption. Then second, you need to understand what is clear communication. Why? Because you need to market this platform to developers. Otherwise, what's the point of creating the damn thing if no developer uses it? And it's a very, very common problem. We spend a lot of energy creating a beautiful platform. The only problem is we forgot the users who are supposed to use it. Ensuring adoption and selling up to management because you need to get buy-in for this. So clear communication, very, very important. And the next one, obviously you need the tech expertise. Depending upon the platform that your organization is using, the Kubernetes, the serverless, whatever, infrastructure as code, cloud native tooling, and the fundamental of GitOps. You can imagine why you need all of this. Now, honestly, if you ask me out of all of these three, tech expertise, clear communication, and learning fundamentals of product management, if I were to select one, it would be clear communication. That's the most important part because tech skills, you obviously have, that's why you're thinking about this, or you can develop them in the next uh, quarter or so. Product management, still I would say, you can find a good product manager in your organization or outside, learn from him or her. Clear communication, supremely important. All right, now let's get to the big one. Show me the money, honey. <laughs> this is the big one. This is what everybody wants to know, right? Okay, let's talk about this. I'll show you some graphs which I picked from uh, this survey of product engineers. And that's the average salary in North America blue and in Europe. Take 10 seconds to digest this. All right. So what this graph is saying that in 2022-23, the average salary is much higher in North America as compared to Europe. That's not a surprise. Everybody knows that. The more interesting part is in North America, platform engineers make 9.4% more than DevOps engineers. In Europe, platform engineers make 19.4% more than DevOps engineers. This is raw data. I'm not making this shit up, right? That tells you the direction in which the industry is going. Then some references. I'll actually link these references um, in the pinned comments. So that'll be easier. All right, so that's a summary of what the heck is product engineering. Let me know in the comment if this style of presentation using a mind map made sense to you. I'm a big fan of mind map. I love the structured thinking and the approach of describing things. Let me know if this makes sense. And every week for the next couple of weeks, we'll take one topic and we'll deep down dissect it and explain it in plain and simple English. Let me know what topic you're interested to go next. See you in the next one. Cheers.